A Single Shard by Linda Sue Park Chapter 8 Min began work on another set of inlaid vases, but before the throwing was complete, the emissary's ship docked. Emissary Kim sent a messenger to ask if any of the potters had anything new to show. Min waved the messenger away without a word. The next morning, the news blew through the village like a sudden sea breeze. The emissary had visited Kang's house. Kang had been chosen for a commission. Later that morning, Tree Ear swept up the remains of the destroyed vases in Min's yard. It was as he had guessed. All of the pieces bore traces of brown clouded glaze. Tree Ear felt numb with disappointment. He wondered how much worse it must be for Min. The potter had still not come out of the house with instructions for the day, so Tree Ear turned to the vegetable patch. He squatted down and began to pull the first of a thousand noxious shoots that threatened the cucumber plants so precious to Min's wife. Someone called out from the front of the house. Tree Ear recognized the voice of the government official Yi. Potter Min, the emissary is here. He wishes to speak with you. Tree Ear dropped the ragged weed he was holding and stole around to the window at the side of the house. He could see little, but heard everything. Min welcomed Yi, Emissary Kim, and the men of the royal cortege into his home. They sat around a low table in silence. Tree Ear heard the clink of pottery as Min's wife served tea. Then, Emissary Kim began to speak. This inlay work of your colleagues, it is something new and will be of great interest to the court. There was a pause. Tree Ear imagined Min nodding in polite agreement. I will speak with no veil over my thoughts, Potter Min. Other aspects of Potter Kong's work are, how can I say it, not as much to my taste. Kang has been given what I will call a limited commission. He will produce work for the court for a year to see if it pleases his majesty. Kim hesitated, then continued. I would far rather have given you the honor of a royal commission, but... I would be remiss in my responsibilities if I were to ignore this new technique. It must be presented to the court. I will now return to Songdo. But if you were to produce something using this inlay style and bring it to me in Songdo, I would guarantee a careful consideration of the work. Tree Ear could barely contain his excitement. The shards, he wanted to shout. Show him the pieces from the rubbish heap. He is an expert. He will understand about the firing. But Min was speaking now. The royal emissary honors me with his words, and I wish to disappoint no one. But I am an old man now. I could not possibly make the journey to Songdo. I thank the emissary for his consideration and beg his understanding for my failure. Tree Ear heard the swish of fine, heavy fabric as the emissary rose to his feet and went to the door. The emissary spoke once more. It is my wish that you find a way somehow Potter Min. It would be a great sorrow to me 
if this were to be the last time I saw your fine work. Then he and his entourage were gone. Tree Ear turned and slid down the wall, slumped over with his head in his hands. The old fool, he thought. He does not wish the emissary to see the imperfect glaze. His pride keeps him from a royal commission, the fool. Just then, Min's wife came around the house with a basket of laundry. Tree Ear jumped to his feet to help her. She nodded her thanks, calm as ever, as if the tumultuous events of the past few days had never happened. They stood on either side of the clothesline. He handed her the garments, and she hung them. Her serenity and the rhythm of the task helped soothe Tree Ear's raw nerves. Yet again, he wished he could think of a way to show his gratitude for her kindness. What was it she wanted, he wondered. She seemed to have no desires of her own, or perhaps her wishes were those of her husband's. Suddenly, an answer came to Tree Ear, as if calling from the clear sky. Doing men a favor, a great favor, that was the way to thank her. Her husband's success, that was what she desired. Before he could think about it any longer, he heard himself speaking. I have a request to make of the Honorable Potter's wife, he said. Please, she replied. I I am aware of the generous offer made by the royal emissary, he confessed and glanced quickly at her. Her eyes crinkled in amusement, so he knew she did not mind that he had eavesdropped. If the master would make a vessel he considers worthy of the court's attention, it would be my greatest honor to be allowed to take it to Songdo for him. Her face was partially hidden behind the linen sheet she was hanging. She fixed it firmly to the line before she answered. I will ask the master under one condition, she said. No, Two conditions. The first is that you return to Trupo quickly and safely. Tree Ear bowed, puzzled. Why should it matter to her how he journeyed? And the second, she paused, the second is that from now on you will call me Ajma. Tree Ear's eyes filled with tears. He bent to pick up another piece of laundry. Ajma meant something like auntie. It was a term of great affection, reserved only for older kinswomen. Tree Ear was kin to no one, and yet Min's wife wished for him to call her Ajma. He did not even know if he could say the word. Well, Tree Ear... The gentle teasing had returned to her voice. Do you agree to my conditions? Tree Ear nodded. He spoke from behind the clothes that flapped on the line. I agree, he said, then faltered. His voice fell to a whisper. I agree, Ajma. A few days later, Tree Ear crouched under the bridge watching idly as Crane Man shaved another sliver of wood from the chopstick he was whittling. Without looking up, Crane Man said, It is too bad that your thoughts are not on a string. If they were, I would have given them a good yank by now to see what I could see. Tree Ear chewed on the inside of his cheek. He should have known it was folly to keep a secret from Crane Man, even for a few days. I will be going on a journey soon, Tree Ear said. He meant to speak firmly, but his voice sounded loud and coarse instead. 
A journey, hey? Crane Man continued whittling. It is a good thing for a man to see the world if he can. Where will you go? Two days before, Min had handed Tree Ear some tools to be cleaned, saying, The vessels will be finished by midsummer. If you leave then, you'll be able to return before the snow. In this way, Tree Ear learned that Min was sending him to Songdu. Since that moment, Tree Ear had regretted the rashness of his offer. He had never once left Trupo since his arrival as a toddler. How could he possibly think of making such a journey? It would take many days over unfamiliar mountains where there might not even be a path to follow, much less a road. He might well lose his way. And who knew what perils awaited him? Robbers, wild animals, rock slides? What had he been thinking? But then, what was he to do? Tell Min he had changed his mind? No, going to Songdo was hardly possible, but not going was worse. Min has some work that must be transported for an audience at the royal court. Crane Man put down his knife, leaned back, and crossed his arms. An audience at the court. Why the riddle talk, my friend? Why do you not say, I am going to the capital, to Songdo? Tree Ear swallowed. He rose to his feet and walked the few steps to the water's edge, picked up a flat stone, and threw it so it skipped across the water. Four times it lit on the surface. How was it that a stone could be so like a bird? Crane Man stood too and skipped a stone of his own. Six touches. Tree Ear shrugged as a little smile stretched his lips. In all the years under the bridge, he had never once defeated Crane Man at this game. Together they watched until the ripples from the stone had melted away. I am going to... to Songdo, Tree Ear said at last, as if testing the words. He looked at his companion pleadingly. It seems too far away to say it. No, my friend, Crane Man said. It is only as far as the next village. A day's walk on your young legs. Tree Ear frowned, mystified. But before he could speak, Crane Man continued. Your mind knows that you are going to Songdo, but you must not tell your body. It must think one hill, one valley, one day at a time. In that way, your spirit will not grow weary before you have even begun to walk. One day... One village. That is how you will go, my friend. Tree Ear watched as Crane Man stirred up the water with his crutch a little. Then he raised the dripping crutch and pointed it at Tree Ear. Off you go now to bring me some straw. You will need some extra sandals for such a journey. And who is to make them if not I? Min spent his time on the new set of vases, one or two of which would be selected to be taken to Songdo. In the meantime, the pace had slowed considerably for Tree Ear. So frenetically had he worked during the time surrounding the emissary's visits that he was ahead of schedule on all his tasks. Plenty of wood filled the shed at the kiln site, Balls of clay and bowls of slip awaited Min's need. Tree Ear found himself idle on occasion, with too much time to think. And think he did, gathering his courage until at last there was enough of it to enable him to stand before Min with a request. What is it now? Min asked. Tree Ear had lingered by the house at the end of the day, waiting for Min to look up from the wheel. Master, Tree Ear bowed. 
It is now more than a year that I have had the honor of working for you. A year? Yes. So? Tree Ear pulled in the muscles of his stomach to stop their quaking. I was wondering if the master would be so good. If he thinks my work worthy, Min snapped. Ask your question or leave me in peace, boy. If you would one day be teaching me to make a pot. Tree Ear's words rushed out in a single breath. Min sat motionless for a long moment, long enough for Tree Ear to wonder if perhaps his request had been unclear. At last, Min stood, and Tree Ear raised his head. Know this, orphaned one, Min said slowly. If ever you learn to make a pot, it will not be from me. Tree Ear could not stop himself. Why? he cried out. Why will you not teach me? Min picked up the half-formed vessel before him and slammed it back onto the wheel with such force that Tree Ear flinched. Why? Min repeated. I will tell you why. The potter's voice was low, but shook with the effort of control. The potter's trade goes from father to son. I had a son once. My son, Hyungyu, he is gone now. It is him I would have taught you. Tree Ear saw the potter's eyes fierce with grief and rage. Min choked out the last words. You are not my son.